In the very present help. Yes. Amen. We are grateful to God for yes. him being our rock and our hiding place. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I want to share today from Luke's gospel, chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, is our text today. Amen. We still plugging our way through Women's History Month, or as we should say, Women Her Story. Amen. Yes. Tell her story. Amen. About what God has done in the lives of women, particularly today in ministry with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Luke chapter 8, beginning at verse number 1 through verse 3, the King James Version has it this way, And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. Amen. Amen. And I just want to talk for a few moments. What's your story or what's your back story? Amen. When you think of celebrating women her story, it also suggests that everyone has a past. Yes. Yes. Or, or as First Lady would say, as Jackie would say, everyone has a story. In other words, my brothers and sisters, everyone has gone through something that they are not necessarily proud of, amen, or consider to be a high point in their lives, yes. amen. I, I, I know, I know y'all look mighty fine today. I ain't gonna talk too bad about nobody today, Angie. I, no, I'm not gonna let the cat out the bag on anybody, you know. But when we are absolutely truthful today, all of us have something going on yes. or had something going on in our lives, amen. Yes. And we ain't that proud of, amen. We wouldn't term it today as being having or as having seven demons. But how many of you all, if you would tell the truth, we've done some demonic things at times. Amen. See, when I want y'all to say amen, y'all don't on the stuff y'all don't need to say amen on because we all know this is true. Amen. We all know it's true. Amen. No one, Reverend Jenkins, none of us showed up fully grown or perfectly mature or completely put together or has avoided every pitfall in life, amen. And, and I don't really think that any of us could say whatever the age we are that we have completed the work in progress. No, I think most of us are still the work in progress. At least I know I am. Amen. At this point in life, some of us can say that we are more mature, yes, and set free, but that's only because of God's grace. Amen. All right. I'm talking to the right crowd now. I'm going to feel my help coming in a minute. Amen. God is the one who caught us and kept us from falling even further into the abyss of nothingness. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about anybody. I'm glad about that today. But, you know, society has such a way, amen, to prejudice us, amen, and to cast us down and to degrade us and to make us feel like we are nothing, yeah. amen. Yeah. But Jesus refutes, and hallelujah, and lifts all of that up off of us. He, he lifts our degradation, amen, and especially for our sisters mm -hmm. in whom we see in our text that's before us. Jesus shows everyone, and I mean he shows everyone, that everyone is equal under God. Yeah. Yeah. Let me say that again. Jesus shows everyone that everyone is equal. I know that ain't deep yeah. to nobody, amen, but it's important, amen. 
that we all need to understand that in Jesus' eyes, everyone is equal. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. No big eyes, no big U's, no amen, no little U's, no, no, no. There's no, no difference because of your gender, amen. All of us are equal under the eyes of God. And in our text, Jesus had the ladies as prominent and significant parts of his ministry. Yeah. Custom says preachers at that time, amen, during Jesus' ministry, it dictated that women are to have subservient roles and to be treated with deference without any authority or prominence, amen. I, I cannot subscribe to that custom today, amen. And when the truth is told, my brothers and sisters, I am quite bothered by the lack of written representation of women in leadership and their participation participation in and association with the ministry of Jesus. Y'all ain't got to say amen. Terry stands on that one all by himself, amen. I know it's hard sometimes to roll where I roll, but, but that's how I feel, amen, because I truly believe that because men dominated so much so, we get these little smatterings of what women did in the life of the ministry of Jesus Christ when, when the truth is absolutely told, my brothers and sisters, that the women did just as much and if not more in the ministry of Christ, amen, than the men. Y'all ain't got to say amen. I got this one. I got this one. I'm, I'm holding my own on this one. Amen. I, I'll let y'all know when I need you to walk with me. Amen. You, you see, my brothers and sisters, the sister stood right by his side. Amen. The more, and this is what I come to understand and realize, particularly in praying and preparing this message, the more you diminish someone else, amen, is the same level or amount that you diminish yourself. <coughs> Amen. Any personal group, <clears throat> any personal group of people, Clark. Water. Any personal group of people that you diminish reduces, Amen, your overall ability to be effective. Amen. Diminishing every anyone else hinders our ability to be our best selves. Amen. Diminishing anyone encumbers our ability to fully perceive and reflect God. Yes. Yes, it does. Maybe everybody didn't get that. Diminishing anyone, particularly in the church, encumbers. Well, maybe that's the big word y'all got stuck with. Break it down. Break it down. It hinders, it interrupts, it disrupts our ability, amen, to fully, amen, honor God, to fully serve God, to fully see God, and to fully reflect God. If, if church was filled with nothing but men, amen, the church would be lopsided. Amen. But I have to say this, amen, to help us along, amen. The church shouldn't just be filled with women. Amen. The brothers do need to come to church, amen, and be a part of the church and in the house of the Lord, amen, so that we can fully do the work of ministry that God has called the church to do. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, I, I want to make it clear, amen, that many women among Jesus' followers were considered disciples. Just like Peter, James, and John. Yes, yes, Talk to him, preacher. I Thank intend to. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's abundantly clear that Jesus did not treat the women as others in his culture treated them. Amen. Right. Jesus treated the women with dignity and as people of value. Yes. The lesson we learn is that we do not worry about people or, who, or those who try to put right. us in the this category. Amen. Amen. <laughs> The disrespected, the disregarded, the disenfranchised, the dishonored, or the disassociated, or the discomforted, or the discouraged, amen. Jesus always counts women in, amen. He counts you in, amen. He acknowledges your worth and honors your personhood. That's where you say amen at right there. <clears throat> Mary of Magdalene, amen, was an early follower of Jesus who equally deserved to be called a disciple of Jesus Christ. Yes, 
She was energetic in her ministry for the Lord. Amen. She was caring. She was thoughtful. She committed herself to the needs of the group. Amen. She committed herself to the cause of Christ. Amen. And she committed herself to advancing the kingdom agenda of God. Amen. Regardless of what others thought. Amen. Mary, the woman that was freed of seven demons, was present at the trial and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. His disciples deserted him. Talk to him. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Amen. Mary, the woman freed with seven demons, amen, discovered the empty tomb of Jesus Christ. Anybody hear that story today, amen? Mary, the woman freed of the seven demons, was the first to see the risen Christ. Oh, talk back to me, somebody. And Mother Holiday, Mary, amen, the woman that was freed of the seven demons, was the first one to talk about, hallelujah, he is risen. So she's equally... Oh, the cycle of Jesus Christ. Amen. We were the disciples. They were somewhere hiding. We were the brothers. Amen. Somewhere in the corner. Amen. Not living up to what Jesus had prepared them for. Amen. Peter with the one with all the mouth. Thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. But on the day, hallelujah, that Jesus was being crucified, he denied Jesus three times. But Mary stood at the foot of the cross. Hallelujah. And on the day that he said he would get up, they were still somewhere locked behind closed doors yeah. having eggs and bacon. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. forgot they were Jesus. They didn't have no bacon. I'm sorry. I was just thinking about what I had for breakfast this morning. No, oh, but Mary said, no, I got to go see about my Lord. Yes, yes, Equally a disciple yes, of Christ. Amen. And I have to say it this way, amen. Mary's actions made her a disciple of Christ. And I stand here today to declare under the authority and the unction of the Holy Spirit to validate that Mary is the disciple of Christ. And there is absolutely nothing, oh, hallelujah, there's absolutely nothing in the Bible. And you can come talk to me if you find it, amen. But I don't see anything in the Bible that says disciples are men only. Come on now. I'm trying to go there, mother. Hey, man, I, I don't see anything. So, so, brothers, talk back to me if you want to. Y'all y'all know my number. Please call me, 410-542-1044. Call a brother up. And we can have this dialogue. Amen. Yep, I put it out there. Call me. And, and, and as such, her being a woman does not invalidate her. Her from being a disciple. Mm -hmm. Her having seven demons does not invalidate her from being a disciple. Her breaking the customs of her time does not invalidate her from being a disciple. She is an authentic, legitimate, valid disciple of Jesus Christ. And so the question today is what gives you validity with the backstory that you have? To be a disciple of Jesus Christ. First and foremost is simply because you are, each and every one of us, is a disciple, is, is a resource rather to God. Yes. Everyone is a, dis a resource to God. Amen. You are a resource to God. Amen. Pastor, you, I'm talking about you. Amen. Amen. You, you're wondering about yourself. Don't worry about that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Leave that to other folk. You just worry about what God is doing in your life. Amen. Amen. Your seven demons, amen, let me help somebody. Your seven demons, and I'm going to list a whole bunch of them in a minute, amen. But your seven demons, here's the first seven, amen. Your greed, your gluttony, your lying, your lust, your fornication, your slothfulness, your gossiping are a resource to God, amen. No matter the mix that you may be, amen, no matter what your seven demons may be, God is going to use that person, amen, to be a blessing to somebody else. Y'all got to say, amen, I'm going to encourage myself with this one, amen. I got my own demons I got to wrestle with, amen. But I still know that I'm a resource to God. And I come in here today, Blanche, to help somebody understand that you are a resource to God as well, amen. Don't count Mary out because the text says that Jesus cast seven demons out of her, amen. Look at the person that she became, amen. Hallelujah. For the ministry of Jesus Christ. I come to help somebody understand that you can become that same kind of resource for God. Yeah. 
Amen. You and your seven demons. Amen. Here we go down the road again, Blanche. Amen. My brothers and sisters, a thing we got to understand, no matter the demons that you may have, all seven of them, depression, hatred, fear, prejudice, anxiety, your manic psychosis, and all of the tom foolery that you're dealing in. Amen. God's going to use all of that for his glory. Amen. I come to help somebody understand that God somehow know how to take the broken vessels that we are and fix us up so, so that we could do something for him that shines the light of Christ in this world to help somebody understand that yes, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. Yeah. Yeah. Valerie, I don't care how crazy we used to be. It's all right. Huh. No matter how filthy your mouth may have been, amen, no matter how malicious you may have been, no matter how slanderous you may have been, no matter the rage that you walked around in, amen, no matter your debauchery or the discord or your selfishness, God's going to use that for the upbuilding of his kingdom here on earth because you are a resource unto God. Amen. Somebody might sit next to you and think about the things that you may have done and try to put you back in the this category. So let them know, baby. Nudge your neighbor and tell them, I'm a resource to the kingdom of God. I'm a resource to the kingdom of God. Amen. You may know my backstory, but that's all right. Amen. I'm still a resource. Someone that God can use for his glory to help build up his kingdom here on earth. Amen. Someone that God can use for his glory to tell love's story. Amen. My brothers and sisters, in other words, God has a way to use our demons, amen, yes. as a demonstration of his grace and mercy for others. Yes. God has a way of using our demons, amen, as a demonstration that his grace is greater than our sin. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 All right, you see, I, I forgot. Hallelujah. Elder Brown, you didn't plug in. The hallelujah light, amen. The praise the Lord light, amen. Y'all forgot. I got, see, so y'all see that? I, I got to hit y'all. I got, got watch the light. I'll, I'll flick it next time I need y'all to say amen and praise the Lord. Amen. You got to learn when to shout, y'all. Amen. Let me say that line one more time. Amen. God has a way of using our demons as, as a demonstration that his grace is greater than our sin. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's good news. Amen. Yes, because right. somebody try to tell you that your sin counts you out. Come on now. Somebody try to tell you that your sin will make you not worthy. Uh -huh. Somebody try to tell you that just because you've done something wrong that you're of no value. Come on now. But the devil is a liar. Somebody said, hallelujah, I've been covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Oh, I thank God today, amen. I, can, I think I can hear Mary say, there's not a friend like the Lord. What did he say, deacons, amen? No, not one. No, not one. Amen. Was that Mary saying that or us saying that earlier? I, I'm sorry, it was one of us. Somebody was saying it, but I heard it. And it is so true. Yes, it is. And so first and foremost, we are a resource. But I need us to understand that, that your, your support of yeah. ministry is essential also. Yeah. Yeah. This is what validates us. And see, and, and for my, all my super sanctified folk, amen, those that try to say, oh, God can do everything and anything, yeah. and I get that. But don't you know that God, Helen, is looking for you? Yeah. God, Chanel is looking for you. Yeah, yeah. Harmon, God's looking for you. Yeah, yeah. Van, God's looking for you. Yeah. Dorothy, one, two, and three, yeah. God's yeah. looking for yeah. you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. To do something yeah. in ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Because you and your support yeah. helps ministry along. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Oh, we ain't got to be on the same level because God gives all of us a different measure of our gifts. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 
and, and, but in the expectation from God is not that we all work on the same level, amen, right. because he understands the gifts that he's given to us. Yeah. How do you know that, preacher? I'm glad y'all asked. I'm get, glad you all are so engaged this morning. Because when Jesus was sitting with his disciples talking about the, the parable of the talents with his disciples, said the master gave some five, some two, and another one, amen. Yeah. His expectation was the, of the one that was, had five talents was to go and make five more. His expectation of the one that had two talents was to go and make two more. And his expectation of the one that had the one talent was to at least go and make one more. Amen. He did not expect the one with the one talent to make five talents. Amen. And so likewise with us, my brothers and sisters, he's only expecting us to function to the fullness of the gifts and talents that he's given to us. Amen. Everybody in here ought to bring your A game. Come on, it. I think somebody preached about that just a couple minutes ago. You got to bring your A game to the table, baby. Amen. You have to bring your absolute best for the kingdom of God, and your support of ministry will validate you as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes I hear Peter, James, and John, and all the rest of their names being lifted up. Their churches, their churches named after them. Amen. Because they're the disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. But don't you remember they are the ones that left Jesus high and dry? Yeah, they were. They were the first ones to flee. Amen. So where's the church named after Mary? I ain't talking about Mary, the mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Where's the church named St. Mary of Magdalene? Yeah, yeah. Talk back to me, somebody. Where is Joanna Baptist Church? You see, they supported ministry, amen, and Jesus' ministry went a mighty long way. And I come to encourage you, my sisters, particularly, and my brothers, to understand that your support of ministry validates you as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to encourage you today, my brothers and sisters, to help us all understand that the work that we do, simply first and foremost, who we are to God. Amen. Amen validates us because we are indeed a resource to God and, and the ministry support that we offer validates us but finally I need us to understand that what validates us is the sincerity and the genuineness of our desire to serve God and the reflection of our gratitude in our service to God. That's a mouthful, but I need us to understand, you just can't come up in here just to be saying, I can check this off as something I did for the Lord. Amen. No, no, no. You don't come to church because you're trying to check a box. I did that today. God ought to be happy. I said hallelujah five times. Amen. That, that ought to make God happy. I, when the preacher said nudge your neighbor, I did that too. Amen. I didn't even frown at him. I smiled at him. Amen. No, no. That ain't that ain't why you come to church, amen. You come out of a sincere, genuine desire to want to, hallelujah, serve God and reflect back to God the gratitude that you have for him, for what he's done in your life. How do you know that, preacher? Because when you think about Mary, amen, the woman whom Jesus, hallelujah, cast out seven demons. She was happy as a lark. Yeah. And see, let me help you with this story, and then I'm going to move on and get on up out of here. I'm going to holler one time. Amen. That's all I got today. It's about one good holler. You see, my brothers and sisters, one time some sinners came and took Jesus. Amen. No, one time one of the Pharisees came and invited Jesus to dinner. Amen. Uh -huh. Back in chapter 7 of Luke. Amen. And this woman came up behind him. If you look at some of the commentaries, they will say, there's nothing that tells us that it was Mary, but a whole lot of us want to associate that with Mary or Magdalene. Amen. Yeah. But that's all right. I'm not going to dive into that. It's not seminary class, amen, where we got to argue whether or not it is. But I come to help us to understand. And the woman came up behind him, amen, and began to pour this oil on his feet, yeah. amen, and began to weep on his feet, amen, and began to dry his feet with her hair, amen. And the Pharisee that invited Jesus to dinner got indignant with Jesus and yeah. said, <laughs> he talked about he's this great prophet, amen. Everybody following after him if he had that great of a prophet, he would know what kind of woman this is. Mm -hmm. Amen. He would know what kind of woman this is. Amen. That's on him. Amen. And I come to help somebody understand, my brothers and sisters, as Jesus told the Pharisee, listen, don't you worry about this woman. Let me tell you a story. Amen. Because there's one whom, hey, whom the servants 
There were two that owed a master. One had 50 and the other owed them 500. Amen. And the one that was forgiven, he and the master forgave all both of them. Amen. The 50 and the 500. But which one do you think will offer the greatest praise? Amen. And the Pharisee answered, the one with the 500. And Jesus said, so too with this woman. Amen. She will offer greater praise because she has been forgiven much. Amen. And I come to help somebody understand today that God has forgiven each and every one of us much. Amen. I don't have to tell anybody, but we all know that God has given us more than a second chance. Y'all know how the story goes. Some of us are working on our 3,249th chance right now, and we ought to thank God for all that he's done for us. Amen. And come and serve him out of the sincerity of our heart. Come and serve him out of the genuineness of our heart. Come and serve him to let God know that we are grateful for all that he's done. And if there's anybody grateful in the house today, somebody ought to shout glory. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout thank you God. Hallelujah. You forgave me of my seven demons. The list, and, 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 and I know some of y'all said hmm, seven. Seven. See, see, y'all got quiet on that one. No, Jesus, you forgiven me of much. And, and, and here it is. I, I, I'm almost done. Here it is. I owe you more. I owe you more, really, than what I'm able to give. Yes, we do. Yes, Lord. I, I, I really don't have enough to give to say thank you, to express my gratitude. Mm -mm. Jesus, I owe you more. But I'm not going to use that as an excuse. That's right. No. To do less. less. Yes, Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm going to bring my A game. Uh -huh. And I'm going to give my best. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Because I owe you more. Anybody grateful for what the Lord has done to you? Wanda, if it had not been for the Lord, and you know what that line on my side means? That means he looked past my foolishness. Yes, he did. Thank you, Lord. He looked past my lunacy. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Yes, God. Yes. And, 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 and there's a whole lot of other stuff he looked past. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 And so as such, I, I got to come. Yes. I got to come and give him my all. Mm -hmm. and that's all Mary was doing. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage every one of us in here to know that we are valid disciples. Yes. Amen. Yes. When we offer ourselves, that's what I left out, mm -hmm. yes. as the resource that we present ourselves yes. a living yes. sacrifice. Yes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes. Holy yes. and acceptable. Yes. Which is only reason. This is. Yes. This is our reasonable yes. service. Yes. We are a resource. Mm -hmm. And our support of ministry really does go a long way. Because yes, here it is. The text says that Jesus was with his disciples and the other women. Mm -hmm. and, and so we know the disciples are 12. And the other women, they named three here. Yes. But when we get to the time for the day of Pentecost mm -hmm. when they're in the upper room mm -hmm. 
the number swells mm -hmm. up to 120. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So it took more even than them just to make ministry go. Yes. Yeah. 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 I want somebody to see what I'm talking about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We need... A whole bunch of folks. Everybody. Don't worry, I'm coming to y'all side. Yeah. 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 Oh, my. Yes, God. Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> Yes. I already got y'all count. Yeah. And me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll we'll round it up by five for those that may be in the bathroom or <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So right. We, we we need all that. Yes, we do. And then some yeah. to help make ministry go. Yeah. yeah. So the only thing I'm asking. Yeah. When someone comes and asks you to do something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make it easy for them. Let me say it that way. Mm -hmm. Make it easy for them. Mm -hmm. Because you are the resource and your support will make ministry go further. Yes, it will. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 All right, come on, let us stay in all of the church. God bless you. Praying for you. Remember, bring your A game. Amen. And you are a valid disciple when you understand that you are a resource for ministry and that you are support team the ministry and particularly of course you come with a sincere and genuine heart